Hey everyone, today I want to talk to you about some big ideas related to position time graphs. So let's get started with an example here of maybe some data that was collected similar to what we did in class where the independent variable here we can see is on the x-axis as time and the dependent variable is position. Now I used a P for position here but sometimes um, position is um, identified by its symbol X. So I'm just going to put a title at the top of this graph. It would be a P versus T graph, a position versus time graph. And you see that I've plotted the points here from the lab. And, and we want to do a line of best fit here. So, And we can see that our line of best fit here looks to be a linear relationship. So if we have a position versus time graph with a linear relationship, let's see what we can take apart. So if we know that this is a linear relationship, then we know that it can be modeled by y equals mx plus b. Let's take a minute and then just to kind of define the variables here. So our y in this case is position, and the symbol for position is x. Our x in this case is time, and the symbol that we're going to use for time is going to be a lowercase t. So now I've taken my y equals mx plus b equation, and we can model it as position equals slope times time plus the y-intercept b. Okay, so now let's talk about the slope. We know that the slope of any graph is going to be change in y divided by change in x. So in this case, change in position over change in time. And what happens as soon as I put that into symbols delta x divided by delta t, I start thinking to myself, hey, like I know him. I know delta x over delta t. That's the velocity. So what's pretty crazy is the slope of this position versus time graph is going to give you the average velocity. All right, well, let's see if the y-intercept here is something that's important. So when I think about the y-intercept, all I need to do is look at the graph and see what's happening when time is equal to zero seconds. And it looks like the car is here at the four meter mark. So our y-intercept is equal to four meters. Well, what does this really mean? I mean, is there a physics quantity that discusses what happens at the zero clock reading, where the car is at the zero clock reading. So th this quantity that describes the position of the car at the zero clock reading is the initial position. So our y-intercept is the initial position of the object. And in physics, this has the symbol x with a little sub-zero. So just from this one graph here, we've actually kind of figured out a lot. So if I take this y equals mx plus b, I could actually substitute more than just the x and y variables. If I take this y equals mx plus b idea, and I take everything that we've figured out so far, our y is position, x. Our m, or slope, is our velocity. It's our average velocity. And I'm going to do something um, maybe a little unorthodox here, but I'm going to think about the idea that if the velocity is constant, then if I put v initial here, wouldn't the velocity at the zero clock reading be the same velocity two seconds later or four seconds later? So you can say that x is equal to v initial times time plus that y-intercept, which was x initial. So we've derived this equation here for constant velocity motion. And I'll come back to this again where we're just kind of outline the big ideas here that we found. One thing that I think would be um, important to be able to do would be to be able to calculate the slope. There's no need for calculation with the y-intercept. We just look at the graph and we find it. But for slope, Let's do the calculation here. So we know that slope will be the velocity of the object. And I need two points on the best fit line here. So I can take this point here. 
This looks to be about 1.5 seconds, um, and that's going to be one meter. And I need a second point um, on the line on the line of best fit, and maybe we'll take this point right here. And this is going to be 0 0.5 seconds, half a second. It is at three meters. Now, when you do change in position here we have to do y2 minus y1. It's not like in math class where, okay, you know, if you accidentally uh, move them, you know, it'll still come out the same. That won't be the case here because velocity is a vector, so the sign matters. So if we have delta y, we have to start with the second y point. So our second y point is going to be the 1 meter minus 3 meters all divided by 1.5 seconds minus 0 0.5 seconds. So on the top here, I get negative 2 meters divided by 1 second. So the velocity is negative 2 meters per second. So for the equation here, if I have x is equal to v initial times time plus x initial, for this specific object that's depicted in the graph here, we could write the equation for this motion. It would be x is equal to the velocity, which you calculated as negative 2 meters per second, times time plus the initial position, which in this case is 4 meters. Okay, so if we recap the big ideas here from position versus time graphs, the slope of a p versus t graph is the average velocity of the object. So if the slope is constant, the velocity is constant. If the slope is not constant, velocity is not constant. And we can take a closer look at that slope and see if it increases or decreases over time. Because if the slope increases over time, the velocity increases over time. Okay, the y-intercept of a p versus t graph is the initial position of the object. And the constant velocity math model is x equals v initial times time plus x initial. Something that I like to do if I have a new math model is just kind of test the units and make sure that it's correct, that this all makes sense. So in terms of units, if we think about what we'd have going on here, position will be in meters. Velocity would be in meters per second. The time or the clock reading will be in seconds. And the x initial will be in meters. Now if I take a look at the left side of the equation, I have meters. So therefore, if I look at everything on the right, it should cancel, right, and provide me with meters. Well, let's check. Meter over second times a second. The seconds will cancel, leaving you with meter plus a meter. So it all checks out and the units are good. Okay, so let's try to do some examples here with some position versus time graphs. So let's say that we were asked here to write an equation for the motion of this object if we're given a graph. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just write out the equation. So it would be x is equal to the initial times time plus x initial. So what can we find here? Well, here's our y-intercept. So our x initial is going to be negative 5. So I'm just going to write that right over here near the graph. The x initial is equal to negative 5 meters. The next thing we need to do is find the slope. So again, we can take any two points on the line of best fit here to find the slope. So I'm going to choose this point here, and that would be 2.5 seconds, 3 meters. And I'll choose this point right here, which it looks like it's about 1.5 seconds, 0 meters. So my slope is going to be change in position over change in time. And so I have for the second position 3 meters minus the first, which is 0 meters, all divided by time 2 
minus time 1. And this equals 3 meters divided by 1 second, which is 3 meters per second. The slope of a position time graph is the velocity. So I know that this here is my velocity. Now when I go to rewrite the equation, instead of x equals vot plus x initial, I can rewrite it specific for this motion, which is x is equal to positive 3 meters per second times time. And instead of a plus now, right, I still have the plus for the formula, but it ends up being plus negative 5 meters, which we could then rewrite as x is equal to 3 meters per second times time minus 5 meters.